Hello everyone, I want to make a quick tutorial video today on how to use the Webin Dynamics computer. This is a wonderful tool that was created by Vincent Lef Chevalier and with a, a little help from Peter Johnson. And it uh, it's great, it's going to help everyone if we start inputting the data from all of the swords that we have. It's a little tricky to use and although in a future video I'm going to discuss the reasons why each of the data is collected and how to use it on a broader range of swords. Today, I'm just going to do a very quick tutorial. This will be for my mates, Duzzy and Lind in particular, who've been asking how to use it for a little while. And we'll just use uh, one sword in particular that's reasonably easy to show how to input all of the, the features on it. I'm going to be doing it as a demonstration for the camera, so it might not be um, as accurate as if I were doing it itself, but we'll just go step by step. This is what it looks like. I'll have a link to the uh, Weapon Dynamics page on um, Vincent's um, homepage, and everyone will have the opportunity to try and do it itself. Um, in order to do this successfully, there's a couple of tools that you'll need. You'll need to be able to record all the measurements that you're taking. You're going to want to have some way to measure it. Some Everything is measured in metric, uh, specifically everything is measured in centimeters. And you'll need some way to get mass, which is measured in grams. Optional, optional but recommended, uh, is perhaps some way to mark out uh, specific locations along your blade. I'm going to be using a Sharpie marker and I have some uh, isopropanol or rubbing alcohol to clean it off afterwards. Uh, acetone is always a good idea um, as well for, for cleaning up the blade. Um, also not required, but perhaps handy, uh, would be a rubber mallet to be able to help us with some of the uh, harmonics of, of the blade later. This is the blade in question we're going to be using for today, a windless longsword. And let's get started. So the first thing we need to measure is the mass of the blade. making sure it's not touching anything and allowing it to settle, we get a weight of 1,448 grams. So it came out to weighing 1,448 grams. Okay, so we record 1,448. I'll write that down and we'll go along and enter everything in so we can see what it outputs in the end. So let's actually back up for a second and look at all the measures. Uh, going right down the list, it's going to ask for a name. You need to put that in at the top, otherwise it's not going to record any of your, your items. Then we'll just go field by field um, through and enter everything that it's asking for. So the first one is mass as measured in grams. The next thing it's going to ask for is hilt extremities. There's a couple different ways that we can measure. We can decide how to measure the length of our blade. Um, you have to decide where the zero point from which everything is being measured from. You can start zero here and count up and count down or count down and count up however you want. Um, in this case, I'm going to start the zero from here. So the hilt extremity, it's talking from the very extreme point of the hilt, is going to be my zero. I could have had it here and had this be a negative measurement, but in this case, I'm going to start this from zero. So hilt extremity is going to be zero. The next measurement it's asking for is going to be grip reference. For grip reference, they're asking for the furthest point along the grip where your hand is able to hold. Now, depending on the type of sword, that may be different. We have all sorts of ornate guards. Sometimes they're ferrules here. Sometimes the grip is only a tiny portion, but you can perhaps get your hand further forward. So in this case, it's pretty obvious because you have a simple cross guard there. So we'll take our handy dandy measurement. I'm measuring it from the extremity of the grip. In this case, there's a peen block on the end, there is probably actually enough construction. And I'm going to measure, I'll try and do it for the benefit of the camera. I'm gonna measure it at about uh, 24 centimeters. So we'll measure it at 24.0, all the way to the extremity of the grip reference. The next point is the blade extremity. So the very, very tippy tip of the blade, where the blade ends and there's nothing else. And again, from, in this case, my zero point, which is the health extremity, all the way to the tip of the blade. So uh, I will start at the tip of the blade, come all the way up here, and I've got uh, 
right about 21 and a half. So we'll 121 and a half. So one meter, 21 and a half centimeters in total length. So that will be the blade extremity. Next up, center of gravity. So I'm going to get my marker this time to make it a little bit easier. So we're going to weigh out exactly where the center of gravity is on the blade. Doot, 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 doot. Measure steadies right about there. And I've left myself a nice finger smudge where my finger was resting. And I'm going to put a little X right there, or a little T, I guess. And we'll measure that out. And that's going to measure eh, about, let's say, 43, right about 43, maybe 0.2 centimeters, we'll say. After center of gravity, it's going to ask for the lever reference. Now, this is important for many types of sword that are single-handed. In this case, I've talked to Vincent about this, he asks that it be left blank if you have a single-handed sword, a arming sword, a short-hilted saber, etc. Ignore this measurement entirely. Just leave it blank. The calculator will take care of that for you. In the case of a two-handed sword, the lever reference refers to how far back you can grip the second hand. And you can see in this case, you have a pommel, but you, you also have a short section of, of grip. So depending on how you want this sword handled, you have some decisions to make. And if we switched swords to, say, you know, a Japanese style sword, the, set, the placement of the second hand, depending on the school, depending on the construction, you have a bit of, of difference here. And that's going to change the dynamic properties of how, how much leverage is being applied to the blade. So consider this when you are entering this, um, this integer, uh, for what, how much distance you're giving the, uh, the lever reference for your, for your two-handed blades. In this case, I, when I've been, uh, working with this sort of Roven, I, I do use the extra, the extra leverage. And so I say that the back of my hand is going pretty much all the way to the bottom of the pommel. I'm going to say that it's right here where the, uh, the kind of cap of the, the pommel lay. So we'll say that that gives it maybe an extra mm, three centimeters. So we'll put the lever reference at three centimeters. Now, this is some of the exciting parts and one of the reasons that you might use a hammer. I'm going to be using my hand. Um, there are reasons that you might use a hammer as will become apparent. The next two measurements are called hilt node and blade node. These refer to some of the dynamic properties of a sword as detailed by Peter Johnson. In the, this plane, so the flat plane, the cross section of the sword, the sword has resonance and has two nodes of resonance depending on where it's struck. Um, it could potentially have multiple nodes, but in this case, there are two nodes in particular. One that's going to be in the hilt, and one that's going to be further along in the blade. So if it's struck here, there will be a point along the hilt that does not oscillate. And the further back in the hilt, the more that it'll move. Let's see. And sometimes that may be in front of the guard, sometimes it may be right in the guard, sometimes it may be further back in the hilt. So in this case, it freezes maybe just a little higher than the guard. So I'll say right about where my fingers are appears to be the point at which there's the least amount of oscillation. So about where I'm holding it. in this case will be, we'll measure it at about 22 centimeters. So going back to the, the blade, let's see if I can do this without getting Sharpie everywhere. I'll hold it in the same spot so that we can create the most vibrations. And I'll strike the blade in the middle. 
and there's a point at which the blade does not oscillate very much. I'll try and catch it, and I'll draw a line across it. And so this is the blade node. And if we measure that off, we get about 91 centimeters. I have 91 centimeters as the blade node. Okay, so this last element is the trickiest one, perhaps, and the one that's easiest to get wrong. It's measuring the pivot points and the action points. So if you look all the way down at the bottom, past all of the previous data that we've collected, it has three different fields. The first one, it says CONF, that says that's uh, confidence, and then it says action P and pivot P. So the action point and pivot point. So the blade has multiple action points, both along this plane and this plane. We're only interested in this plane for the time being. Um, and depending on where you're having action along the hilt, it'll have uh, a corresponding pivot point along the blade. In order to do this properly, you need to have a light hand. If you grab it and impart an action on it, but are applying it too firmly and just move the blade back and forth, you're not going to allow the, the blade to na naturally uh, pivot along the uh, the the, pip, the the point of mass, the uh, point of leverage that the blade dynamically has. So you can have as many pivot points as you like um, that you can measure it from. In this case, I'd like to have at least two. So initially it gives you one line, you enter that information, and then you can have an additional line that, um, or as many as, as you want. So we'll, we'll do two. We'll do one close to the guard and one close to the, the pommel. So for the first one, uh, we'll start with the, the one at, at the rear. So again, I'm going to do this in such a way that it's easier for the camera and it's not so easy for me. So if I hold it too firmly and just move the blade back and forward, it's not going to pivot where we want it to. So I hold it lightly and then swiftly move the pommel horizontally. And that allows the blade to pivot right about here. So at least that's where I think it's pivoting. And I will mark that with a pen right about here. And with our handy dandy measure, I will say that the action point where I was holding it was at about, eh, we'll say three and a half centimeters. And our pivot point was occurring at roughly 60, 61. Now you can see I made a real big blob, so that first measurement, that first uh, data entry point, confidence, if you're not very confident about your measure, you can put more than one centimeter of fudge room there. I'll, I'll say that I'm reasonably confident that I got it within about a centimeter. So I'll say we got within one centimeter of confidence at 61 and a half um, for our first pivot point. Second pivot point. Hold it here. This is the action point. And it's a little difficult to see where, but I'm just going to say it's about there. All right, I left a little smudge on the blade. And again, I'm going to have to clean the blades afterwards. So I'm not too concerned about getting it dirty for the time being. So the action point was initially at about 20, say 23, 22 and a half centimeters. And the pivot point's occurring at about 84 centimeters down the line. So this is what our blade looks like in total. We have the center of gravity, the action point for the aft action, so the aft pivot point, the forward, um, pivot point, and then the center of percussion based on the, the, um, this, the blade node, the hilt node. So 
after you put all these elements in, make sure that you hit add, you, that you have a name for your sword at the top and that you hit add so that it saves everything. You can then export the graphic file. You can share either the weapons database or the individual sword. Um, and in a future video, we'll talk about how to measure more difficult blades than this kind of symmetrical blade and what all of the, the implications of the graphic mean. But for now, that is how you measure it. Good luck, guys.